Right guys, this is a long plane review for Split Personalities on the Amstrad CPC released by Domark in 1986. And this is a slidey block puzzle game gone mental. But before we get to that, the original title was apparently Splitting Images, which caused legal action from the satirical TV show Spitting Image, with it being too close to their name. And you can see the Spitting Image influence on the Spanish box art here. Ironically, Domark two years later would release the official computer game of the show. Anyway, and lastly, uh, Split Personalities was re-released on the Bug Bite budget label. Anyway, let's get this fired up and started because it's quite um, a long, long play this one. And to be honest guys, I perhaps could have done this a lot quicker in retrospect. But anyway, here we are on the title screen. Some lovely music here. From the original by Anywhere. I'm not sure where the original comes from. It might be the Commodore 64 version. Got some credits here. Um, coding, Darren Pegg. Graphics, Jason Pegg. No idea if they're related. Probably though. And music by John Brozowski, if I pronounce that right. Um, so I found no other Amsha games from any of them. Indeed, Moby Games has no other listing for them for any other system too. It's as if all three appeared for the CPC split personalities, then disappeared shortly after. How mysterious! Is this the curse of Domok? Who knows? But anyway, this music is really nice actually. And it kind of fits with the game very, very well. And it's nice to have a well presented uh, title screen here. And we'll just have a listen to the music in full before we start. And as mentioned at the start of the vid, this is a slidey block puzzle game gone mental. Now don't switch off straight away because there's lots of cool little things in the game. We've got some very interesting characters we will build from the uh, blocks. Famous, um, famous characters from history, specifically mostly the 1980s. So we're going to have Margaret Thatcher, Sir Clive Sinclair, and even, yes, our Lord Alan Sugar himself as well makes an appearance in this game. But there's also lots of little cool things to do. Watch out for the bombs that, we're gonna, that will blow up. Um, there's special icons that if you can combine together that are specific and related to the character you're building for extra bonus points. Put two diamonds together for extra time. Watch out for the cracks in the walls and uh, doors that open if you don't want to lose your blocks. Right, let's start off on level one of 10. And um, here, ladies and gentlemen, we are building the picture of um, Helmut Kohl, <laughs> apparently. Um, he was a Chancellor of Germany, which is our UK equivalent of Prime Minister. And he was, um, he was that from 1982 to 1998. So obviously very popular in Germany and did very well for himself. Now, as you can see guys, oh, watch out first of all, there's a bomb here, so we need to get rid of that very, very quickly through a door that's open. Um, so yeah, we're building his picture up. And as you can see to the right there, there's um, the completed picture um, and how it should look. Uh, most importantly though, you'll notice that there's a white square that's been highlighted. Um, basically, this is where your piece that you last highlighted under your cursor should go. For example, there you go, that one goes to the left there. So you're always looking to the right as well at that um, box to the right uh, and seeing where, the, where pieces should go. And as you can see, we're building this up very nicely now. Now, to get a new piece uh, on the playing field, uh, you put your box in the top left corner there and press the fire button and it will spew out new pieces um, horizontally right. But it can also spew out bombs and other things. For example, there's FDP there. I believe that was his political party. I might be wrong. And if you can, if you can combine it with the other associated piece, you get lots of bonus score. But I've decided to get rid of it there because we're just building... Um, him up now and um, I don't really care about the score here I just want to get through the game um, so as you can see on the far right of the plane area there and right in the center there's a crack in the wall and if you throw a block 
horizontally right against that crack, it will bounce straight back at you with a lightning bolt. So, um, as for the difficulty in the game, uh, as the levels progress, you're going to see more and more cracks on the wall. Some will be permanent, some will appear and disappear, like you saw at the bottom there, if you were eagle-eyed and noticed that. And... Um, also, the bombs will explode a lot quicker. I think you normally have about sort of five or so seconds, but um, you still have to be very quick. And uh, there we go. Oh, a pear and what looked like a globe. I don't quite understand the reference there. There's a gun there. If you get a bullet on the screen and combine the gun and the bullet together, you get lots of extra bonus points. I believe... Um... Not sure how much points that scores. And there we go, we've built Helmut Cole. And there he is in all his Germanic glory. Lovely presentation and jingles and music though. Really, really nice. And oh dear, it's Maggie Thatcher we're building here on level two. Now you can throw pieces out. Oh look, there's the, um, that landed on a crack there. Oh, and some bonus points there. Um, yeah, um, we have a, yeah that back, one of the pieces there bounced off the crack in the wall there. That's what happened there. Um, you can throw um, the blocks of the of the uh, person you're building out the doors if you want to, but they are not lost permanently. They just get shuffled to the back of the pack. So we can't push that one to the right there against the crack. We can move it down there, and there we go. There we got that in the bottom right corner. Now, Margaret Thatcher's um, bonus points here. There's um, some drinks there. Um, if you combine that with Dennis, which is which was Margaret Thatcher's husband at the time, um, you get some extra points. I think poor old Dennis was known as someone who liked to have a, a few drinks, shall we say. Which I think that was quite parodied a lot in the Spitting Image TV programme at the time. So some cheeky references here and there to get your bonus score. Um, you start the game with, well, I think it's like three lives, but the lives go from three to two at the start of every level, and then you gain the life back. It's a bit of a strange system, but you can see that by the two sort of um, flashing squares at the bottom right corner of the screen. And of course, guys, you're against a time limit, which you can see ticking away at the bottom there. Now, on later levels, it's very, very important. Oh, there's Dennis. Dennis Thatcher. Combine that with some glasses of wine for some bonus points. Got to get with the bombs very, very quickly. So I often leave two blocks to the top right there. The tap there will actually uh, extinguish the fuse on the bomb and get rid of the bomb for you. So it's often handy to either keep two pieces to the top right so the bomb will uh, end up there and you can quickly shove it out the door or have a tap in play at some point so you can shove the bomb against it. Uh, just doing some shuffling around here. I'm actually taking far too long here guys. I, I, I kind of regret that I haven't gone back and redone this but some of the levels are a complete nightmare to do and I, can't, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> um, I could probably have completed this a lot quicker. In fact um, the first few levels I didn't want to chuck any of my blocks out of the door but actually it's fine to do that it will actually allow you to complete the game and the level a lot quicker and just concentrate on the blocks you're looking for building it up from the bottom upwards and it will give you more room to maneuver then instead of like having a difficulty shuffling everything around in fact, you're going to need to use that technique of shoving blocks out the uh, door until you get the one you want on the very, very last levels. Because there's, there'll be tons of permanent cracks in the walls and, and it will make it extremely, extremely hard for you. Um, but yes, you're going to need to watch that timer. Time is your biggest enemy here. And to gain more time, you can combine two green diamonds together. So if you get a diamond appear, especially for the later levels, it is well worth keeping them, keeping one of them on the screen until the other one appears. And we're nearly done Maggie here. 
And there you go, there's Margaret Thatcher. Right, I'm not going to get into politics on this video. Whether you like or dislike Margaret Thatcher, I will leave up there. Um, probably would prefer as well no political comments in the uh, well in the comments in this video. Thank you. <laughs> but there we go. Right. Okay, you may not. A lot of you may not recognise who this is, especially if you're not from the UK. Um, this is Neil Kinnock. Um, he was famous in the UK in the 80s for leading the opposition party to the Conservatives, the Labour Party. Um, yeah, basically the equivalent of Jeremy Corbyn, if you want. And uh, yeah, there's a few items here to combine. Um, and the previous one, Margaret Thatcher, you do get the Labour Party symbol appear. And if you combine that with, I think it's the hammer? I might be wrong. Or it might be the fist, actually, for smashing Labour to pieces. <laughs> uh, you get bonus points. And this one, I can't remember what you combine Labour with. I'm not that bothered about scoring um, high scores on this one. I just want to get through the levels. They are tough enough as it is. It may well be, if you get a Tory symbol, I think you combine it with the Labour symbol on this level, and that may well be the bonus points. We'll see. We'll see. Um, what else to mention? Um, okay, if you want, we've talked about bonus lives. If you want to get a bonus life, you're going to have to score 100,000 points, which is actually quite difficult to do. I don't think I actually scored 100,000 points actually completing the damn game. So, um, yeah, maybe if you know you're going to struggle, maybe you do need to think about getting the, all those bonus scores from combining items. Oh, it's a fist. Right. So maybe it's the fist and the Tory party or the fist and the Labour Party symbol for the bonus score on this level. Specific to poor old Neil Kinnock here. Hmm. Okay. Um... Oh yes, something odd I noticed about the Amstrad version. Um, it seems to randomise the um, starting character you're building. Now the first time I booted this game up, and I should stress it's from the same disc, we're playing this from the, Am this is the Amstrad disc version. Um, the first few times I played this, it was Ronald Reagan, the US president, that uh, we started with. Um, and weirdly, after the first two or three times of playing this game, ever since then, it's always been Helmut Cole. And I'm, I can't explain why it randomises it like that, but every time I've booted it up since, even though the disc is right protected, um, it's chosen Helmut Cole as the first guy, not uh, Ronald Reagan. And we don't get to build Ronald Reagan anywhere in the game after that either. So, not sure what's going on there, but that's just probably worth noting and pointing out that there are other, char other characters like Ronald Reagan, potentially others as well, um, that you may get to build. But there we go. Probably taking too long here. I probably should have shoved a few pieces out the door and just got the bottom built up. So, there is a better way of doing this. And... I kind of regret doing it the way I have, but hey, I can't be bothered redoing this all over again. It is what it is. Um, because, um, yeah, this was kind of the first time really playing it beyond level two or three. And I'll tell you why in a minute, actually, as we finish building Neil Kinnock there. And there he is in all his glory. Okay, moving on to level four. And then the bonus boot we built up there is added on to the final score there. And, oh, do you recognize this guy from the right there? And also the famous three colors there, currently in the bottom right corner. All right, yeah, this is Clive Sinclair, or Sir Clive Sinclair, as he's now known. And can you guess who might be next after this character? Yes. <laughs> it will be Alan Sugar. Very nice. Um, 
Talking other characters, I do wonder if some of them are different or randomised further on non-UK releases. This was released, of course, in Spain. Definitely, I've not seen any French box art for this game, so I'm not sure if it went to France, but um, obviously Sir Clive and Alan Sugar probably would still be recognisable to people in France and Spain, but Neil Kinnock? Hmm, not so sure. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, I was saying before that um, this is kind of, I've not played this game much, so I never owned Split Personalities as a kid or played it. Um, I think the first time I played this was probably, I don't know, briefly about five or so years ago, and I found it very, very confusing to start with. And I kind of just gave up. I just kind of like, I just want to have a slidey block puzzle game, not all these bombs and cracks and doors. And um, yeah, I, I, I found it too frustrating, especially being caught out by the bombs a lot early on until I so kind of built a technique where I'd leave two blocks to the top right there um, or, or figured out that the taps extinguish the bombs. So I never gave this much time of day um, playing it years later on emulation. It wasn't until I uh, did a stream of Domok games on my YouTube channel on the uh, Amstream every Friday, 9pm guys. Plug, plug, plug. Um, that um, I actually kind of figured the game out. Well, actually just read the damn manual. Read the damn manual if you're stuck on this game. It's available on the CPC Power website. And um, I started to really enjoy it. I was never a fan of slidey block puzzles in the first place. I had quite a few of them as a kid, um, as we did in the 80s, and, yeah, Yawnsville, Arizona, basically. Um, but this has a real charm to it. Um, there's a lot more to it with all the items you can combine, the cracks in the wall and the doors and the special items, the bombs and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I found this really addictive. And after the Domark stream... Uh, which is unusual after after an AM stream. I'm kind of done with the game or games I'm featuring. I won't play them again for a long time. But I kept coming back to split personalities. Um, indeed, I was halfway through already making a different long play video. And I stopped that to do this one, basically, because I kept bloody playing it. So I was like, right, I'm just going to do it <laughs> in the end. And be damned if... Um, this isn't going to get many views because I can't see this being a popular video. Um, I can't see slidey block puzzles being that enticing on YouTube, but hey. Um, oh, I'm not sure what you combine the cup of tea with. Oops, I shoved that block out the door there, I didn't mean to. Um, but there you go. Yeah, so I got addic I got fairly addicted to this, and I got to like level three eventually, and I figured, right, screw it, let's go and record this long play. Let's get it done. And I wish I played it a bit more and practiced a bit more, because by the time you get to the later levels, you have to learn some really good techniques, and um, these techniques can apply a lot earlier in the game. And I probably could get through these earlier levels a lot quicker. As I mentioned a few times already here, my techniques are not great here. So I, I, I'm, I'm focused just on kind of the blocks I've got on the screen and getting them roughly in the area or position they're going to end up in. What you should really probably focus on is building up either like the bottom layer or the far left layer. Far left layer vertically or bottom la layer horizontally. Um, oh, gun and bullets combined there for double the score, I believe. I think that is. There you go. But um, yeah, so yeah, I could probably do this a lot quicker. You guys can probably do this a lot quicker, but here's my long play. So deal with it. <laughs> but of course, guys, we are building our Lord and Saviour, Alan Sugar here on this level and it's really, really nice to have Alan Sugar in a game because <laughs> often Sir Clive gets featured in a few games but poor Alan doesn't always bomb there I'm going to use the tap there to extinguish because I got a bit stuck there damn so if you hit a block which is against a doorway which opens that block 
uh, you hit, unfortunately, will fly out the door, which could be very, very annoying and frustrating, especially if you spend ages trying to get it there in position or whatever. One thing I will mention, actually, that noise, that noise of your cursor on screen probably gets quite annoying over time. Indeed, Mrs. Zypho did, did scream and shout at me to turn that bloody noise off when I was doing this long play at one point. Um, yeah, that noise does get quite annoying. But it does add weirdly to the kind of uh, tension, stress, anxiety of the game. That noise is constantly in your ears and it kind of puts a bit of panic and fear into you a little bit because you know time is running out. It's not a pleasant noise and um, I guess that works to kind of put the pressure on you a bit in a way. But I think I'd rather have some tense music in the game rather than this bloody noise all the time. That's like the first real negative I can think of the game apart from its limitations purely by its design. Um, I think they've added as much as they can to the slidey block puzzle formula with, um, before going into realms of ridiculousness. Ridiculousnessness? <laughs> what am I talking about? You know what I mean guys. Before it turns really ridiculous and just um, too much going on. There's already, there's already a lot to think about and handle here, so, um, mm. Oh, yes, the fuel here. Whatever you do, do not let fuel and matches combine. Uh, otherwise, you'll have a nasty explosion on the screen, and you'll lose a very, very precious life. Now, I'm going to do this long play up to the final level without losing a life. Oh, here on the it's actually Alan Sugar special is combining the dollar and the pound for 4,000 plus bonus points. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this long play without losing a life. Well, that noise is timer is running out. Uh, but I'm going to use a life on the final level because that is an absolute bitch of a level. And there he is. Lord Sugar in all his round-headed glory. It looks a bit odd there, to be honest. <laughs> it's quite an amusing picture of Alan Sugar there. Right, okay. Um, there's there is some confusion online as to who this actually is. Um, and uh, apparently, this is um, well. According to a lot of that, nah, did you see the bogey name there? According to a lot of places online, this is meant to be Frank Sinatra. Well, uh, I actually believe this is Humphrey Bogart, a uh, movie star famous for his gangster movies and stuff like that. Indeed, I went looking at pictures of Frank Sinatra and Humphrey Bogart, and when we see the final picture it will be more clear, but um, this definitely looks more like Humphrey Bogart than he does Frank Sinatra. The more famous pictures of Frank Sinatra, he tended to wear um, trilby hats, or whatever they're called, anyway. Um, and I found a very, very similar picture of Humphrey Bogart online, um, which they probably use as the source material, but looks fairly identical to this one, which I can share with you in the comments in the video if you're that interested, or, or, or I'll shove it on my Discord or something like that. Um, okay, what else to mention here? Um, oh yeah, okay, let's talk about the other versions of the game. Um, so, as I expected, actually, for once, uh, the CPC, Specky, and C64 versions are all very similar. Just differences in music and sound and colours used. The Specky graphics um, suffer in comparison to the other two due to the lack of colours. However, are still excellent for the Specky, so let's not diss the spectrum here. It's just, well, it's struggling with its limited colour palette and number of colours it can put on the screen. Um... Uh, the Specky version also suffers with having just beeper music and sound effects. Um, but again, it's actually pretty good for the beeper. The CBC and Commodore 64 have different tunes. Um, I actually prefer the style and the sounds of the CPC one here. And then the SID. Um, it's actually more fitting with the game. 
uh, despite great jingles from David Whittaker on the Commodore 64 version. But David, who did loads of Amstrad tunes, isn't doing the uh, sound effects and music here. This was, um, what was his name again? John Brozov Brozovsky, sorry. Um, anyway, um, all three versions, they all play and handle the same, um, from what I can tell and what I've tried out. The CPC isn't lagging in speed here either. Um, they all play as fast as each other and at the same frame rates and all that kind of stuff. Um, overall, I think actually the CPC is the winner here with nicer looking graphics and nicer sounding music. That's more fitting. So there you go. Um, so the Amstrad version is the one to go for, in my uh, honest opinion, and try not to be biased here. I am the Amstrad guy on YouTube, but no, I think I picked the Amstrad version over the other two. Um, the Commodore version has a lot more sort of pastely kind of colours. I mean, there's really not much in it between the three versions. So don't anyone get upset <laughs> if you pick the. If you're a big Commodore fan or Specky fan, they are. It's not much between them, to be honest. But I'd go with the Amstrad version personally. Um, oh yeah, there is one other version of this game on the uh, Commodore 16 and Plus 4. However, I've never seen this run in, and there isn't even a YouTube video out there of this of the of that version. So did it even exist? Apparently so. Um, but no, you know, I've not seen that running and. Traditionally, the Commodore 16 plus 4 version of a game is usually missing a few levels or something like that, or here would be a few characters and stuff, So, but I don't know. I don't know. I've not seen it running, so I couldn't say. But definitely, I think the Amstrad version is the one to go for out of all the other ones. And there we go. Nearly built this now. Spending way too long here. Should, do, should have done this a lot quicker, but there we go. And I believe, guys, that is Humphrey Bogart. If I'm wrong, or you think it's someone else, please, please do let me know in the comments, and I will pin a comment to the uh, video or something like that, correcting myself. But, um, yeah, I believe that is Humphrey Bogart, especially with the light behind him there. It looks very sort of film noir -y anyway. More so than Frank Sinatra, which he, he doesn't look like Frank Sinatra to me. Anyway, level 7 of 10. Right, we're nearly cr really cracking on now. We've got a lot of cracks appearing and disappearing quite quickly. So we're going to have a... This is going to be a tough one. And this is where it gets really, really difficult, actually. Um, oh, we've got a pair of ears there. Um, I think you could, that's um, in reference to Prince Charles because we're building Prince Charles and Lady Diana here. Poor Lady Di, God rest her soul. Um, and of course, Prince Charles is famous for his big ears. There's two of them there on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, so if you push a block against the cracks in the wall there, it will get a lightning bolt shooting out, pushing it as far away as, as it can. So here we're doing a lot of waiting around, waiting for cracks to disappear and doors to close. Oh, there's a, I think that's a hairdryer. So yeah, Lady Di was famous for a, a sort of a bouffant 80s air and hairstyle. And Prince Charles was famous for his ears, combined the two together for lots of bonus points. Let's talk about uh, magazine reviews. I always look for the Amstrad Action Review, because that was the magazine of choice for the Amstrad. Um, never bothered with Amtix or anything like that. Um, so this was reviewed in the November 1986 issue 14 of Amstrad Action. Uh, they rather liked it a lot, awarding it the AA Rave Award. Um, oh, did we combine the diamonds there. Did I miss that? So I was, I was just looking at my uh, review score here. Um, if we did, that's bonus time. Um, uh, okay, so they awarded it the AA Rave Award. Oh, there's the hammer there. Combine it with an ice lolly, I believe, for something special to happen. Never bothered to do that in my playthrough of this, though. So, and never mind. Um, so, AA Raid Award so from Amstrad Action. Uh, they noted, which is early for Domark days, that Domark don't have the most sparkling of reputations on the Amstrad, with some notable past turkeys to their debit. Oh, yikes. 
This is early days of Domok as well, and this would remain one of Domok's better releases for many, many years, in my opinion, anyway. Um, yes, we recently did uh, two live streams covering all the Domok games on the Amstrad, and it didn't go well for Domok, put it that way. <laughs> Just look at Pit Fighter, Super Space Invaders, Hydra, um, some real crap games from Domok over the years. To be fair to them, the vast majority of them were kind of average to okay. Um, if you had to... Yeah, we asked the chat to like review most of the Domark games and give them scores. I don't think any single Domark game got any higher than... Well, maybe one or two actually got higher than 7 out of 10 on average from the chat. And that kind of sums Domark up, sums Domark up a lot, actually. Um, mostly crap and mostly averaged to okay and never getting into like classic game status. Um, if we disregard Prince of Persia which they only distributed in the UK otherwise that's a Broadband France game. That's the only game really that Dumark can be really truly proud of but they have really absolutely nothing to do with it. So here again guys I should have maybe just concentrated on building up the bottom section or the far left section first and just chucking um, blocks I'm not really using yet out the doors to give me more room to work in. So yes, yeah, a better way of doing this. But we're getting there now. And thank God I had that diamond, as well, uh, those two diamonds for that extra time. Otherwise I'd never have done this level the way I'm doing it. But yeah, abstraction review finally. Um, what, what was their review scores? Um, so they gave the graphics 65%, the Sonics 59%, Grab Factor 87%, Stain Power 86%, and an overall AA rating of 85%. Hmm. Um, I think that's a bit harsh, the Sonics there, 59%, because the jingles and music are excellent. And the music on the height on the um, title screen is really really good. Maybe they marked it down for the annoying um, sound effects of the uh, ch -ch 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 noise. Anyway, there you go. There's Di there's Prince uh, Princess Di and Prince Charles there. Yeah, Princess Di actually looks quite good there. Pretty good graphic representations of the people. And we move from one famous royal couple to another. Oh, God. Okay, so this is Prince Andrew. Oh, God. I can imagine the comments now in the video, given his recent scandal in the press and all that kind of stuff. Jeffrey Epstein and all that. Oh, yes. Combine the um, ring and the Playboy bunny there for lots of score. 5,500 plus points there. Now, this level is really tough. As you can see at the bottom of the plane area, um, there are permanent cracks all the way along and two cracks that randomly appear at the bottom left and bottom right. So what you want to do here, guys, is focus on getting the... Well, first of all, get two blocks in the top right there so you can get a block uh, down to the middle section at the bottom there that's the only place um, a block will be able to land at the bottom and start building up the left hand side and the bottom hand side yeah, as you can see that's what I'm doing at the moment in hindsight I probably should have chucked a few of those two blocks stuck in the middle there out the door um, but I think we can work around it okay Yeah. Yeah, there's a better method here. Uh, I, w I wouldn't have bothered there. I maybe want to start with like either like the top left one there and work your way around sort of anti clockwise. Oh, yes, the two things to combine here for bonus points the Playboy Bunny for Prince Andrew. <laughs> oh, God. That's kind of um, more and more appropriate given the recent scandal he's been in, uh, involved in. Um, um, I forget what um, Fergie's is here. Princess 
yeah, Prince Fergie. <laughs> Sarah Ferguson, wasn't it? She was involved in her own sort of scandals anyway. She was a bit of a pain in the arse for the royal family, shall we say. But we're doing very well here building up um, this so far. But we're going to be very careful here because I think we may end up running out of time. Keep the green diamond there because I think we're going to need the score. Sorry, the extra time, not the score. What am I on about? Two green diamonds for extra time. We're actually doing pretty well here. Uh, this level will catch you out if you don't know how to beat it the, f uh, the first time. Um, but yeah. So yeah, got to work to that bottom centre um, bit where the doors opening and closing and use that to get your blocks down. Uh, took me a little bit of time to work that out, actually, to be fair. Two diamonds. There you go. Extra time. Very, very important there. Now, if you can t you combine two random um, items that are not related to each other, they will just disappear, and that's a quick way of getting rid of them if you uh, haven't got room to get it out the door. Um, okay, as for my review score, guys, I think I'm going to agree with Amstrad Action, actually. I think they gave it 85%. I think I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Um, I think this is really nicely presented. Um, it's actually surprisingly fun and, addict and addictive for a slidey block puzzle type game, essentially. Um, uh, yeah, I think the jingles and music are really, really cool and nice. Um, the characters you're building are kind of amusing <laughs> in a way. Actually, come on, Zypho, what are you doing here? You've actually. Oh no, we're missing a piece, aren't we? To the... No, we've got them all on the screen. But some of you were looking at this, watching, going, what are you doing? That one goes there. What are you messing about? I know, I know. It's a lot easier said than done sometimes when you're under pressure, when you're recording something and uh, the record button has been pressed. It's called red light syndrome. If you're ever a musician in a recording studio, as soon as the red light comes on, it's um, you tense up <laughs> and perhaps not at your best. Anyway, right, um, this one, again, is a, this character is a little bit of a mystery to me. Um, well, to a lot of people. Um, apparently, this character we're building is Mick Jagger, but you tell me if I'm right or not when we see the final picture at the end. Because um, for a while there, I thought I was building someone like Joan Jett or something, but... But the clue is in the guitar symbol there and a pair of red lips. Because, of course, there it is. There's the lips. Of course, Mick Jagger is famous for his big lips. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is Mick Jagger. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. I really I actually really enjoyed doing this, apart from this level and the last level which are and the previous level, which are... A bit of a nightmare, especially with the time limit, and it's gonna be—it's so easy to make a mistake and uh, accidentally blast a block out of a door, and get caught by the bomb. Especially on these later levels, the bombs explode really, really quickly. Um, I think that the game is difficult enough with the time limit and stuff, and with all the cracks that are permanently on the screen, that I don't think they needed to increase the time it takes for a bomb to explode. Oh, there we go. Two green diamonds sorted. Oh, it's been really quick here. And that's why I leave two blocks in the top right there, guys, for the um, getting the bombs out of the way. But yeah, eight and a half out of ten from me. Um, despite its frustrations and annoying sound effects in game, that bloody noise. Um, I think this is a really, really fun game. It's not going to be to everyone's tastes, I admit, but. Um, no, this is still damn good, actually. And probably one of Domark's best ever releases. It's just a shame that the coders, Darren Pegg, Jason Pegg, um, didn't seem to do anything else. Same with the musician. Music's really, really good. Whatever happened to John uh, Brozowski? God, I'll get that name right eventually. Okay. 
again. I probably should have just blasted a few of these blocks out the door. If you get a bomb over there, quickly get another block out so you can push it left against it, so then you can get it out the door. Tough game. Tough game to beat. Uh, you only get a measly three lives. It's far more measly getting a bonus life here, actually. We need 100,000 points. I'm on, I'm on level 9 here, and I'm only on 86,000. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm struggling here, because I should have built up from the bottom upwards, and now I've got this whole column there that's blank. And we've also got then got to get a block to the bottom there, where there's a big uh, several cracks in the wall. Uh, but I don't think I've got anything else interesting to mention. Um, if you do boot this up and do get the Ronald Reagan level, uh, you want to combine the uh, the button with the finger over the top with the nuclear explosion for uh, bonus points and you can combine the um, USA flag with the USSR flag he has two special uh, combinations of items to get bonus points on that level so yeah we need to we're going to struggle get, to get that piece in the right at the very bottom there. As you can see, I'm struggling to rearrange here, and I've kind of screwed it up, and I'm wasting precious time. Actually, I can see it now. The, the solution was far more obvious and easy than uh, <laughs> I'm, making it, I'm making it tough myself. I should have perhaps practiced this game a lot more uh, before hitting the, report, the uh, record button, but hey, there we go. Pretty, uh, pretty obvious now what to do. Yeah, no more blocks to get. Just a little bit of shuffling around now. And there we go. Now tell me guys, is that Mick Jagger? That is the worst picture of Mick Jagger I think I've ever seen. That does not look like him. <sighs> Answers in the comments, please. But I'm pretty sure that is meant to be Mick Jagger. Anyway, here we are on the final level. And this one is an absolute bitch. Because of all the cracks on the walls. Permanent ones at the bottom there. And well, apart from the bottom right corner there, which is comes up randomly. Uh, we've got two permanent cracks on the left there. And a third one that appears randomly as well. What you need to do, guys, is you just need to start in the top left there. You can see the, there's a blue block there in the top left. Keep two blocks to the right there and build that up uh, one block at a time. So we're now looking for the block that goes just below it. So what, you, what we're going to do here is just keep chucking blocks out the door until, until we eventually get there. I'm just getting rid of that one because these two are going to be relatively near to where we're, where we're going. And we're going to build the far left wall from top to bottom first. And then we're going to build the bottom horizontal section from left to right as well. And I'm just going to keep chucking blocks out. That's the one we need. It's just appeared. That one's going to go just below the one top left. And then we have to shuffle them around like so. problem because we can't shove it we're gonna have to shove it out the door and get rid of it thankfully we kept this one and that's the next block to get as you can, you can see what i'm doing now guys hopefully hopefully it's become obvious to you now ideally you want to keep a diamond here but um let's get that extra time if you want to if you want to do this level without losing a life that's you need to keep that diamond perhaps keep that top very very top right there's the second diamond Damn. Um, but I decided to use uh, one of my lives here to get through this level because, quite frankly, it was doing my absolute nutting. And we're keeping going until we get that bottom. There we go, we've got both of them there. So we just 
just need to now we need to get rid of these two blocks that we've been using to sort of um, um, block blocks in the top right. <laughs> That's the right thing to say. In the end, I decided to get rid of that one and stop wasting time and just get this in. Come on, Zypho, you know what you need to do there. That one, just push it to the right there against that one. I, I've panicked. Oh, I've done that instead. That works too, I suppose. There you go. Now I've got that one bottom right. Now we just need to build up the bottom um, section from left to right. And just keep chucking the blocks out until we get the one we want. And pretty much that is the only way to really beat this level. Um, you are going to run out of time unless you get the two diamonds. That's the block we need. So we just need to shuffle things around here again. There we go. That's in place now. Exactly where we want it. Don't know why I did that. I think I was panicking because knowing time was running out. And there you go. That's what happens when time runs out. A little explosion effect and a ne 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 noise to taunt you with. And that's actually the block we want. That centre bottom block. So we're going to have to shuffle things around here again. Build up that bottom section. And that's in place now. Now just watch out for throwing blocks down onto it if the door is open. Otherwise that will go flying out and you'll be screwed for this level. So that centre bottom block. Uh, don't chuck another block against it downwards if the door is open. You've got to watch out for those doors opening. But we've got another block on top of it now. So that's pretty much safe. So we're, we're good now. And now we can start building this picture up, which, if you haven't guessed already, is going to be Marilyn Monroe. And uh, I'm sure you guys don't need me to tell you who Marilyn Monroe is. There we go. Very, very nearly completed this. At last. So yeah, guys. Definitely an 8.5 out of 10 game from me. Very, very fun and addictive. Once you actually understand what's going on in it. So read the manual or listen, listen to my words here to understand what's going on. Hopefully I've explained it well enough that you kind of get the gist of what's going on. And now we're just rearranging things. These are all the blocks we need. And I'm just taking my sweet time here to figure it out. Plenty of time to sort. One more block is needed. Shove that up there. Oops. And there we go, Marilyn Monroe. We get the game over jingle because there's no more levels. But essentially we've completed the game and we get a congratulations screen here. It tells us we, you are now a split personality. Well, thank you. <laughs> so there is an ending screen here. We've had kind of firework explosions, shall we say, rather than things actually blowing up on us. But there we go, guys. That was Split Personalities. And, yeah, last thing to say, just to confirm my review score one more time, that is an 8.5 out of 10 game and a very, very good release from Domok and highly recommended. I find this, I don't normally find puzzle games as certainly not slutty block puzzle games very um, enticing or wanting me to come back and play more of them, but I, I find it with split personalities. I got fairly addicted to this. 
and I kind of regret not checking it out sooner. So if you've never played this before, or you've maybe played it briefly and got put off by things exploding on you and being annoying or whatever, I suggest you come back and give this a second look and now you know what you're doing in it and how to beat it. So thank you very, very much, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.